it must be in accordance with plans which are explained to those involved. Information has to be given. Otherwise, we say that person is foolish. We have a variety of different titles we call it. And one of the basic characteristics of God is that he is all wise. Al-Hakim. Ahkamul Hakimin. This is one of the basic characteristics. We prize and respect wisdom. Surely God is more wise than we are. This is common sense. So one who knows God knows automatically that God revealed his will to human beings in this world. The messages, revelation happened. It's real. And he revealed it through messengers. Prophets who would carry those messages to human beings. That is a necessity. Knowing God, knowing who God is, necessitates that conclusion. One who doesn't know God, who would assign to God idiocy, yes, they can say yes, God created the world, left it to run on its own. But knowing God removes these doubts and takes us to the ultimate conclusion that God revealed his word, sent messengers, and we need to know what was his word. We need to know who were his messengers. And we need to find out the very purpose of our existence. Why are we here? What were we created for? And this is something each and every Muslim is supposed to know. It is clearly explained in the Quran. Maybe if you ask a Christian and others, why were you created? They may have a difficulty finding an answer for it. Why? Because if you go through the Bible, there's no answer. You'll not find anywhere in the Bible where it says, human beings were created for this purpose, specifically. No. People say, well, maybe it was for this, maybe it was for that, it's some of this and some of that, mix it together, come up with something. But to say, in the scripture, in the Gita, or the Vedas, or the Gospels, or the Old Testament, find a verse where it says, God created human beings for this purpose. You don't find it. But in the Quran, you find it. And so, each and every Muslim has that clarity available for himself and for herself. Now, though the clarity is there, that doesn't necessarily mean that all Muslims know what is the purpose. In fact, on one occasion in Doha, Qatar, when a brother from India, Muslim, brought in a Hindu who he had been giving you know, some explanations about Islam to, and he wanted me to give him further clarity and explanation. He brought him into the office. We sat down, and I asked the Hindu young man, you know, what is the purpose of your creation? And he said, I don't know. No idea. So I said, well, see, that's the difference between your religion and mine. In mine, it is absolutely clear. Every Muslim knows. I turned to the brother, right, brother? He was looking at me with this blank st stare I said, uh-oh, uh-oh, hmm, well, I won't get caught in that one again. So, uh, actually, the reason is there in the Quran, you know, it's in a chapter known as the Dariyat, the 59th chapter, verse 56, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَةِ 
illa liya'budun. I did not create the jinn and human beings except to worship me. Purpose of creation is to worship God. Worship God, not meaning merely to raise up one's hands and to call on him in time of need. But to live a life, a complete life, in accordance with the commandments of God. This is worship. Submission to God. In all aspects of life. This is the totality of the message. Knowing who our Lord is, gives us that or should give us that understanding of the religion that it is not a religion as is typically understood by about religions where you have set rituals done at a certain point in time you know this is when you are religious you do your religious thing then the rest of the time you do your life thing no for a muslim religion covers all aspects of life from the time you wake up in the morning till the time you go to sleep at night, it is the duty of every Muslim to know what God has commanded, what instructions God has given for himself or herself for every minute of every day. It doesn't mean we, we're, we don't have the will and the ability to choose and decide to do things. Of course we do. But when we choose and decide to do things, we should do them in accordance with what God has taught us. That is the totality of religion, which is summed up in the verse in which God says to the prophet, to human beings, قُلْ إِنَّ صَلَاتِي وَنُسُكِي Say, indeed, my prayers, my sacrifices, my living and my dying are for Allah, the Lord of all the worlds. This is what we've been instructed. And this is the conclusion of knowing who is your Lord. So, inshallah, we will walk away from this session with some clarity if those questions that I raised earlier left doubts in your minds and I didn't ask people to put up their hands who understood and who didn't I didn't want to embarrass anybody I just went through it assuming everybody knew and this was only a reminder but those issues we should be clear about if we have read the Quran and we continue to read the Quran, the clarity of this will be obvious to us. If we read the Sunnah, the way of the Prophet, what he said, what he did, the guidance he gave, this will all be clear to us. And this is what we need to have as a living system that we follow throughout our lives. So that at the end of this life, when the time comes in the grave and we are questioned, Man Rabbuk will be able to say, Rabbi Allah, my Lord is Allah. Barakallahu feekum, wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi.